Section 41 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 7. Antipurgatory, The Veil of Flowers, Prince's Intent on Earthly Glory. After their words of greeting, dignified and glad, had three and four times been repeated, Sordello, drawing back, said, Who are ye? Or ever yet the spirits who deserve to rise to God were toward this mount directed, my bones were buried by Octavian's order. Virgil am I, and through no other guilt did I lose heaven than through not having faith. Twas thus my leader thereupon replied, like one who sudden sees before him aught he wonders at, and as he says, it is, and no it's not, believes and disbelieves. Such did the former seem, and then his head he bowed, and humbly turning back to him, embraced him where inferior men take hold. Oh, glory of the Latins! said he then, through whom our language showed what it could do, eternal honour of my native town, what merit or what grace shows thee to me? Tell me, if I deserve to hear thy words, if thou from hell art come, or from what cloister? Through all the circles of the woeful realm, he answered him, "'Twas not for doing aught, but for not doing, I lost the sight of that exalted sun thou longest for, and which was known by me too late. There is a place below, not sad because of pain, but only gloom, where moans sound not as wailings, but are merely sighs. There with those little innocents I dwell, who, not delivered yet from human guilt, were bitten by the teeth of death. And there with those I dwell, who did not clothe themselves with the three holy virtues, but who knew the others without vice, and practised all. But give us, if thou know and can, some sign whereby the sooner we may reach the place where purgatory hath its real beginning. No fixed place is assigned us. He replied, I may go upward and around. I'll join thee, and be thy guide as far as I can go. But see already how the day declines, and one at night cannot ascend. It hence were well to think of some fair resting place. Here to the right are souls that dwell apart. If thou permit me, I will lead thee to them, and not without delight will they be known. How then is this? was answered. Should one wish to mount by night, would some one hinder him? Or would one not ascend through lack of power? Then with his finger good Sordello marked the ground, and— See, he said, when once the sun is gone, thou couldst not even cross this line though not because aught else than gloom of night would hinder one from climbing. That it is puzzles the will with impotence. One could, however, downward go again therewith, and walking o'er the hillside, wander round while still the horizon kept the day confined. My lord then said, as if in wonder lost, Do thou then lead us thither, where thou saidst that one well waiting can enjoy himself? But little had we gone away from there, when I perceived the hill was hollowed out, as here on earth our hillside valleys are. Thither, that shade said, we'll betake ourselves, where of itself the hillside forms a lap, and there will we await the coming day. A winding path there was, nor steep nor level, which led us to a border of the dell, where more than half away the hillside falls gold and fine silver scarlet and white lead indigo blue woods clear and shining brown and green of emeralds when newly flaked would each in hue be vanquished by the grass and flowers found growing in that bosomed dell as by the greater vanquished is the less nature not only had been painting there but with the fragrance of a thousand scents was making up a blend unknown on earth here seated on the grass among the flowers salve regina singing souls i saw who for the dell could not be seen outside before the waning sunlight nest itself began the mantuan who had guided us desire me not to lead you among these much better from this border shall ye learn to know the acts and faces of them all than greeted among them in the dale below 
the one that sitteth highest up, and seems to have neglected what he should have done, and with his mouth joins not the other songs, was Emperor Rudolph, he who might have healed the wounds that so left Italia dead, that by another she reviveth late. He who appears to cheer him, ruled the land where rise the waters which the Moldau gives the Elbe, and the Elbe gives the sea. Named Ottokar he was, in swaddling clothes, far better than is Wenceslas his son, on whom a bearded man feed lust and ease. That small-nosed man, who close in counsel seems with him that hath so kind a countenance, died fleeing and disflowering the lily. Look at him yonder, how he smites his breast. And see the other one, who for his cheek hath sighing made a cushion of his hand. Father and father-in-law of France's bane, they know the latter's foul and vicious life. Hence comes the sorrow that so pierces them. The one who so large-limbed appears, and joins in song with him who hath the manly nose, was girded with the cord of every worth. And if the youth who seated is behind him had following after him remained as king, worth would indeed have gone from vase to vase, which of the other heirs cannot be said. The kingdoms James and Frederick hold, but none is owner of a better heritage. Seldom doth human righteousness ascend among the branches. This is willed by him who gives it, that of him it may be asked. My words concern the large-nosed man no less than the other, Peter, who is singing with him, whence both Apulia and Provence are grieved. That plant is as inferior to its seed, as of her husband Constant still vaunts more than Beatrice and Margaret do of theirs. Behold the king, known for his simple life, Henry of England, seated there alone, he in his branches better issue hath. He that among them lower on the ground is sitting and looks up is Marquis William, for whom both Alexandria and her war make Montferrat and Canavesa weep. End of Purgatorio, Canto 7